Now we're going to look at the production design. So we've got to ask ourselves, given this frame here, how can we make him look as lonely as possible? So I'm going to pin the preview here so that any changes we make, we can see in context of the camera. The first thing I'm going to have a look at is these cushions. Now I want to make him feel isolated, so I'm going to move the cushions away from him. Now you can see it's kind of clunky. Every time I click a new cushion, this axis is pointing in a different direction, do you see? So the red axis is pointing this way, but if I click this cushion, it's pointing that way. And it's kind of hard to work on the planes. So I just want to move the cushions along the plane, always on the couch in the same reference. So what I can do is up here, I can click this button. It's gonna cycle it to a world coordinate system. So now, no matter which cushion I click, the arrows are always pointed in the same direction. Now this allows me to very quickly and reliably, no matter which way the cushions are pointed, move them around. I'm going to move that one there, and I'm actually just going to delete these extra ones we made. Make it feel kind of sparse. And I'm going to move these objects down here. Now this particular object is made up of three different elements. So it has the leaves, it has this little patch of dirt you see in here, and then it has the pot. So if I try to move one, the rest get left behind, which is not good. So what you can do, Let's close up the search bar up the top right if you've got that still open. And you'll notice when we click objects, they get highlighted up here. We can select each part and then we can click Control G. And now, whenever we click any of these in here, no matter if we click the dirt, the pot, or the plants, they're all grouped together. So we can just move them all as one, which, is, which can be very handy so we don't have to move them individually. So I'm going to move this right here, just off to the side, maybe towards camera a bit, like that, just so it leads the eye in a little bit. You'll see like it's creating this line here, which we like. Now this book is actually pretty fine where it is, but I'm just going to turn it around to kind of continue this line, this arc theme going around. Now I'm going to select this table. Again, I'm just selecting by clicking on it. And if I hold shift, I can select multiple other objects. Now I don't want to group these objects, but I do want to move them all at once. So because I've held shift, I've selected them all. And I can just move this whole table with the pots around. So I'm going to move this something like that. I can also rotate them together. So I want to continue my arc around and I reckon if I rotate it a bit, I'll get a nice arc. So I hit E, get my rotation gizmo and something like that. So with that, I've noticed this could be in a bit better spot. And now we've got these paintings on the back wall. Let's move them around. If I move in and check out these pictures, you can actually see that there's this glass, you see that, on the front of each one. So when I'm clicking these paintings and wanting to select the painting itself, the I'm selecting the glass instead. Now, if I was to select the outside, you can see over here it's selecting the picture frame and that's moving both. Now, why is that? Well, over here, the glass has been attached to the frame. So this is a little different than group in, but acts in some similar ways. So what you, all you really need to know is that because it's been attached, I can move one and the other follows along with it. But if I move the child, which is the glass, it'll happily move separately. So I have to be careful. Now there is one trick that helps us select transparent objects or avoid them. So if you click T on your keyboard, just with the viewport active, you're no longer going to be able to select anything that's transparent. 
So I can click anywhere on the painting and select it. But now if I want to select the glass, I can't really do it in the viewport here. I'd have to click T again, and only then can I select the glass. So this is very handy if you've got a bunch of smoke in your scene, you're trying to select something through a window, those kind of things. So now that I've sorted that out, let's back up and let's move these paintings around. I'm going to move them over here and just make him feel more solitary in the scene. And notice I've still got my world transform system selected and because of that, I can just select this box here between the Z and the X, the blue and the red, and it's going to let me move both up and down and left and right, and I can move anywhere and know that it's always sticking against that wall, no matter where I move it, as long as I've selected that little box there, it's slide along that plane, which is very handy. So this one's a bit big. I'm going to move it behind here. So I hope you're following along. Just move these around until you get what you think best represents the brief as far as the set goes. Now one more thing we can change. Now this bit's a little bit advanced, so don't beat yourself up if it doesn't make sense. We'll figure it out as we go on and as we get more experience. But we can change these materials. So right now this blue is popping out in particular. So I'm going to select that. And because it's a static mesh, like we learned before, it has a material assigned to it. So let's double click that. And we've got our pillow. And luckily someone's done the work for us and they've exposed the base color tint. So we can change the color of these pillows. So I'm just gonna bring the saturation down. So there's still a little bit blue, but they're now no longer drawing all the attention. I'm going to put this up for a sec and notice that both pillows are changing. Even though I selected this one initially, both are changing. Do you see? So the reason for this, I'm going to just change this and click OK. And close out. The reason is both of these pillows, if I select them, have the same material. So they're pointing to the exact same asset. So when we change that asset, they're both changing. So the material isn't really part of this mesh, part of this pillow. It's separate and it's assigned to it. So these two pillows have one material that they share. So we've learned now about moving things around the scene, grouping assets, attaching assets. We've learned a bit about transparency and again about material instances. I've changed my set to work on the brief of a lonely man sit in and wait in for someone.